After reading my one book, Overcoming the Archon Through Alchemy, there are some readers that ask my thoughts on what I sometimes refer to as the big question. That big question is in the background of all our minds, whether we consciously realize this or not, and this question has many different facets, because like all big ideas, its complexity straddles many different perspectives, possibilities, and potential future problems. This big question though, is only really consciously faced by a select few. These few are usually, but definitely not always, people that have the daring to ponder the big picture, and face courageously the possibilities that this big picture reveals. And this big question, as I have said, is a complex one, with many different angles. It goes something like this. Upon a true and deep examination of the world, that sometimes happens as a result of an accidental or worked at expansion of awareness, a person comes to realize that there is something that is preying on us, eating us, and imprisoning us within a cage of egoistic and self-centered ignorance, all for its own benefit. These select few begin to truly realize that there is a great dark force out there, just beyond the power of our sensual awareness, that survives by feeding on humanity, and looks down on the people of this planet, in the same way that we may sometimes look down on an insect. And so, through these insights, the question, the big question, basically boils down to, why? Why are we prey for this evil thing? Why do these evil predators exist? What is the meaning of this struggle? And, what else can we do to stop it? This is indeed a big set of questions with many facets. And there are quick and simple truths that do clear up some possible misconceptions, but that are oftentimes not the best policy, being that generally, as I have found it to be the case anyway, straight out and out cold fact, is not always the best policy. The reasons for this, seeming beating around the bush, when talking about the reality of life and our place in it, is not veiled evil, or a superiority complex I think, but rather a desire to not hurt those that you may care for. In the same way that you would not tell a dear brother or sister a shocking truth, but would rather give a long explanation with all the background needed, in the hopes that the final truth of it all is revealed to them slowly, without so much pain, as they ponder and discover for themselves, the sometimes seemingly cold epicness, that faces all of us humans on this earth. But once some of this knowledge is discovered, it is best to make a few things plain so that these cold facts can help to bring even greater understanding and personal empowerment. So here is a bit of cold truth, with great love and humbleness, for those that have faced the big picture and are asking the questions that such revelations may bring. And these truths, begin like this. We are food for other types of life, in the same way that a carrot, is food for us. A carrot feels, it has a complex relationship with the ground, the plants around it, the sun, the wind, the rain, and the whole of the earth. The carrot is a distinctive living being. It may not have an awareness like ours, in that it does not have the kind of flexibility of consciousness, nor the ability to intend as an aware self, as we can, for example, but it is nevertheless a complex, intelligent, feeling, and highly connected entity, that is in a continual state of inner growth. The carrot also has a type of inner self, an inner being that strides many different dimensional states, and takes part in many different types of development, it has what we might term a type of soul. But this carrot is food for us, and for many creatures. It is delicious and nutritious to those beings that eat them, so much so that some creatures develop different strategies, in order to have access to as many carrots as possible. Such strategies may involve the development of a good nose to find them, a good memory in order to know when and where they are most likely to grow, and even the strategy of actually planting carrots and setting up a garden, in order to have all the carrots that one could ever want. 
but all is not suffering and slavery for the carrot, and even though it feels much pain at times, and believe me it does, not in ways that we might consider sentient feeling, but in ways that sometimes even surpass our feelings of pain as human beings, this carrot grows a great deal, as it faces the many challenges it must face, through its life and death cycle. And such a journey expands the carrot's awareness, and gives it a chance to become more, always more. The carrot is on a journey, we are all, on a journey. And so, one cannot say that rabbits and humans are evil for eating the carrot either, there are no black and white answers. Certainly some humans from our point of view may seem to act in an evil way, in that they may abuse the power that they have, and eat more than they need, or ruin the land trying to grow more and better carrots, but this is just a part of the complex growth cycle for humans, as they struggle against the forces that prey on them. After all, lest we forget, we humans are very much just carrots to other types of life, and the great dark and infinite sea that surrounds us, does not care. It is too big to care. So we are equal really, humans, carrots, and the great archon, none of us are any better than anything else. And on a deeper level, why should such a cold reality matter? We have been given life and a chance to become more in whatever way we may choose. That is a blessing, and the striving towards that expansion of being is the greatest joy we will know, an endless journey to be sure. So in the end, we should not feel bad for the carrot, it is on the greatest adventure possible. And we should not hate the evil bunny or human, that eats that seemingly poor carrot, because they are on their own journey and have their own pains and sometimes terrible struggles to face. All that we can do as humans on this earth, is to accept our fate in humbleness, and see the epicness that we face as a great challenging adventure. A challenge worthy of the monumental beings, that we are working to become. And when we get melancholy, and feel that we are losing this battle, we must focus on that massive expanse, that dark and infinite cosmos all around us, and let the fear of that sight embed itself into the marrow of our bones, as we imagine all the freedom and endless possibilities that will be available to us, the moment that we can defeat this old and nebulous foe. If you would like to know more about the predatory forces that we humans must face, and what to do to conquer them, so that we can continue on our journey of inner expansion and freedom, then I suggest the book, Overcoming the Archon Through Alchemy. I will leave a link to the book in the description below.